Hi there, my name is Peter Amoroso. I'm the Sales and Marketing Manager for SIS Panels. Today I'll be going through the presentation I gave at the Alberta Energy and Innovation Summit in Edmonton in uh, late June 2023. So if you weren't able to attend or want a quick refresher, this is ideal for you. So with that, let's just jump right into it. So when it comes to improving our buildings, a lot of times it feels like we focus on the interiors, making them more functional and comfortable. On the surface, this makes sense. It's where we spend most of our time at home. But it's really come at the cost of neglecting our exteriors. And now more than ever, we need to re-examine that. I don't think I need to tell you that extreme weather is becoming more and more common and the skilled labor shortage shows no real signs of stopping. And when you pair that with consumer preferences pointing towards energy efficient home features and local and federal governments gunning for net zero building codes within the next 10 years, builders, builders don't start thinking about how to best reach these new standards they're going to be scrambling to when they're forced to. And that's why we set up to design a product that makes building energy efficient exterior walls simple. We don't want to change how people build. We want them to be able to keep the same preferred construction methods, techniques, and processes. Because you really you shouldn't have to reinvent the wheel to build better. And that's where SIS panels come into play. So in a nutshell, what we do is we laminate different exterior insulations to structural sheathing. Now, this is all installed to your building frame the exact same way a normal sheet of OSB or plywood is. The difference is now your framers are eliminating thermal bridging, moving the dew point to the outside, and adding about an extra R9, R10 to your assembly on average, all without any extra time, effort, or trades on the job site. Nothing changes with your assembly or process. Just by swapping out a normal sheet of OSB for our one-sided OSB SIS panels, now you're building essentially net zero ready exterior walls, just like that. One thing that makes us different from uh, companies with similar solutions is our customizability. It was very important to us that builders can mix and match different product benefits. That way they can meet their project requirements in the most time and cost effective way possible. So these are our five insulation types we currently offer right now, with uh, the mineral wool and EPS being most popular. All, all these go, most of these, sorry, goes thick as 10 inches. We do most of our insulation cutting in-house with a hot wire cutter. So doing custom projects is no problem at all. Actually, I, I'd say that's where our passion really lies. In just a bit, I'll show you a project we did that utilized some of our 8-inch and 10-inch OSB SIS panels. But uh, till then, let's look at what builders are more commonly using in their assemblies. Give you a taste. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our one-sided OSB SIS panel, it's our best seller, especially in Alberta. We see Alberta, we, uh, we see builders gravitating towards it when they're just dipping their toes into building better. Because it uses familiar materials and it's pretty easy to wrap your head around. One forward-thinking builder in Calgary, the Sterling Homes Division here in town, they uh, often just decide using this in their net zero program. And since then, they've written it in because they love that they're able to eliminate thermal bridging with a product they can just nail into place the exact same way as a normal sheet of OSB. Like I said before, we don't want to change anything with how builders built. This is also available with fire rated OSB for areas that require fire rated sidewalls. Next is our one-sided plywood SIS panel. This is most popular when paired with mineral wool insulative core. It's one of our best sellers in BC. It's a great option for builders trying to use low carbon materials or looking for a simple option for a fire rated assembly. Because This is a great solution when it uses a fire rated plywood in combination with that mineral wool insulative core. But like I said earlier, it's all about mixing and matching different product benefits together into one. Now, for builders looking to save an additional step of their building process, we'd point them towards our one-sided ZIP or DENS Element SIS panels. Now, the ZIP OSB and DENS Element exterior drywall both have a water-resistant barrier and air barrier within them. So that means you can eliminate the need for any building wrap as long as you seal the joints with each manufacturer's respective solution. For ZIP, that's a tape, and for DENS Element, it's a combination of a tape and a, and a putty membrane. 
Uh, last product I'll quickly feature is our MGO or Magnesium Oxide SAS panel. This is our Cadillac, our flagship when it comes to uh, fire rating. So it's non-combustible. Adding it into your assembly gives it a two hour fire rating. The board's eco-friendly. If you remove the fiberglass mesh from within it, you can eat it if you really wanted to. Uh, it's structural. Uh, this panel can float on your wall and you don't need to align the edges with studs. And it can support your cladding system. So that half inch exterior board you can install cladding like hardy board directly into it without needing to go into the studs. Now I'll show you a couple of our projects just for time purposes, but we're quoting have done projects as far west as Vancouver Island, as far east as Boston, and as far south as Phoenix. So location is really a non-issue for us as long as we uh, continue setting up a distributor network as we've been focused on doing. Uh, first project I'll look at is a what multifamily unit we did in Calgary in 2020. So this used that magnesium oxide panel, meaning the building has non is non-combustible. A couple key points here is we custom cut all the panels to size prior to them arriving to the job site. This was done to uh, ensure the installers have the most streamlined process possible. As long as we're giving a cut list beforehand, we are fine doing custom cutting in the shop to help you save time on the job site. Uh, the other big benefit this project saw from using an MGO SIS panel was that uh, ability to support cladding. Originally, this project wasn't going to use our product and was going to use a, a track system for the cladding attachment. After switching to this and eliminating the need for it, it saved a significant amount of money per square foot, about six or seven dollars, which can make a huge difference on a project like this. Uh, next project that we'll look at is a retrofit that we helped out in Golden, BC. So this one's unique because they uh, had an existing building, they stripped it down to just the plywood, and then they picked it up and moved it to a new location. After that, this work was done. So the panel we supplied was a Use that OSB or zip OSB and with eight inches of EPS for their exterior walls and 10 inches for the roof. So uh, no cavity insulation was required whatsoever. It qualified as reaching step five of BC's energy code. And after doing a blower, blower test, reached a uh, air tightness of 0.94 ACH, which everyone involved was, was thrilled to see. So it just goes to show whether you're doing retrofits or new builds, Product like this is a great solution for both because retrofits are going to be a huge target point going forward. It kind of feels like we've identified the problem and not so much the solution with that one. Because building codes are great, but anyway, getting back onto topic. I've mentioned thermal bridging once or twice during this presentation. I will be the first ones to tell you that thermal bridging has been around for decades since they started building the R2000 homes during the 80s and before. And if this problem hasn't really been dealt with yet, does it really matter? Well, I'll quickly walk you through a hypothetical case study to show you just how much of your wall is affected by thermal bridging. So this is a standard home in Alberta. Two stories, R22 exterior walls, detached garage. When you do the math, the home has about 260 linear feet of exterior wall space. Keep that number in mind because we'll use it on the next slide. Now that we have the total wall space, we need to determine how much is exposed to thermal bridging, where the points in the wall are with the least resistance to heat loss. So that will be for your studs and plate material primarily. So when you do the math, add it all up, you're left with just under 45 linear feet of wall space exposed to thermal bridging. When you divide that by that 260 number we just talked about, you're left with 17% of your wall that has an R value of R5, R6, this is a two scale drawing on screen and that red wall at the bottom is all your walls, oh, sorry, all your studs and plate material put together. That's literally how much of your wall has essentially no insulation. When we first crunched these numbers, this honestly blew me away because people are investing in premium energy efficient homes with such a fundamental flaw. Like an energy efficient home has three main components, the renewable energy system, mechanical system, and the building envelope. When one suffers, when one falters, the entire system is brought down. What's the value of reducing your overall heating load? What's the value of extending your furnace's lifespan by limiting how hard and often it has to work? And maybe you don't even need that highest efficiency furnace anymore. 
Maybe you can bump it down a peg or two to help save some costs. What's the value of making it easier for your renewable energy system to support your home, to make it easier for homeowners to actually feel the difference a system like that can make in their homes? Like if you're willing to add a third pane of glass to our windows, is it really a stretch to consider adding a second layer of insulation to your walls? So we find that once we start explaining how we see our panels fitting into the net zero puzzle, slowly the darts start connecting and people consider taking the plunge into improving their building envelope. We know there's going to be a huge need for this type of solution in the near future, but we're a bit ahead of the curve. And that's why we're so focused on education. We want to make sure that the industry knows that when they choose to build better or they're forced to build better, they know one place they can go that will help them reach net zero ready exterior walls with a solution that's implemented like that. One less headache to worry about so you can focus on the other parts of the home that actually need your attention as a builder. I appreciate you listening to this presentation and please feel free to contact us at our website www.sispanels.com or email us at sales at sispanels.com. I appreciate you listening and have a good day.